The last year has not been the best for competitive Pokemon play, however things are looking up. With collecting being at an all time high and the advent of huge online tournaments, never has there been a better time to get into the Pokemon trading card game. But where to start? Enter sealed only Pokemon. Like many before me such as Nimnim, Rebs, Fat Moose and Let's Play Pokemon, I'm diving into a unique and fun trading card challenge. On a budget of £30 an episode, I'll be trying to build a competitive Pokemon deck to take on the PTCGO ladder and battle our way through online tournaments. The catch? I can only use sealed official products to build my deck. That means no trading, no buying singles, and no easy way out. So with that in mind, let's crack some packs. Welcome back. The time has come for us to enter our first team challenge of the series, and things are a little bit different because of it. I finished last week's episode, episode 5, the night before this team challenge, and I really wanted to upgrade the deck before entering, but I didn't have time to film this opening. So I cheated. I knew that we'd be opening the Zacian V League Battle Deck this week, so I added the cards I wanted from this product to our deck online, and I entered the team challenge with that list. Which means as of recording this intro, I've actually already played this week's games. Which is rather different than normal, but we're going to crack open this League Battle deck and I'll fill you in with what I decided to add before we get into those games. It does also mean that we're under budget this week. I had £2.50 left over from our last episode and I picked up this deck for £23. So we'll actually have £9.50 to bring into episode 7. I try not to do that very often, but I mean, I make the rules here, so deal with it. This League Battle deck is fantastic, there's no beating around the bush. This is one of the best products they've put out since the Trainers Toolkit. There is a ton of great additions. That being said, there are a few cards that I will give honourable mentions to but didn't actually make it into our deck this week. Number one includes Mewtwo from Unbroken Bonds. I was actually looking forward to adding this card to our deck but the fact that we pulled Elder Goss last week means that this guy is kind of redundant now. Elder Goss kind of does everything he does, but better. The only benefit would be that this guy is a single prizer, and we can uh, use Scoop Up Net to reuse him over and over. But I think for now, Elder Goss V is going to stay in our main deck, and Mewtwo will just be a one to consider. Great Catcher was, was one that I hummed and hard about a lot, actually, and I'm still not sure if I made the right choice. I think I'll be adding this into next week's episode just to try it out. It was very much on the edge of whether or not we'd make it in. Viridian Forest was more of the fact that we didn't have a stadium in the deck currently, and if I wanted to have something in case we run up against a fire deck that you know they really need their stadiums, we might be able to you know slow them down for a turn. Not that Viridian Forest really slows them down mu that much as it still goes in an energy. That's why I didn't make it in, but it was a contemplation for sure. You're probably confused by this. This is just the fourth copy of Jirachi. I decided to stick with three, as you'll see in a minute, and the fourth one will be a continued maybe. And that little sneak peek you just saw was, yeah, we didn't put ADP in our deck this week. I thought about it. I really thought about it. And uh, same with Great Catcher. I might put this in next week just to try it out, but I didn't think this was the route we wanted to take for our deck, at least not now. Uh, so it's uh, it's a maybe. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Moving into cards that did make it into the deck, we have three Jirachi, rather than the full four, as well as the scoop up package. Get back in there to go with it. This, you know, I can speak in the past tense because we played the games. This solved a lot of our consistency issues that we had previously, especially against Let's Play Pokemon in episode 5. We've been struggling a lot with hitting Rare Candy especially to get Blastoise out as quick as possible, and this is my solution. I think it worked pretty well, especially in conjunction with our other edition, Oranguru. Primate Wisdom allows you to take a card from your hand and swap it with the top of your deck. That's fantastic. It allows you to see one extra card on your turn, especially synergizing well with Blastoise as we can always guarantee if we have a water in our hand we can stack it to the top of the deck and use Torrential Cannon. Orangu was possibly MVP of our deck this week. 
I just I can't go on about how much I love Oranguru. And the other two additions are rather simple. We've bumped up our Marnie line to a full four now, thanks to the League Battle Deck. So this is our deck this week, and I know you've noticed. How could you not? Where is Inteleon? He didn't make it, I'm afraid. Yes, I know, I'm so sorry. He's, uh, he's our starter Pokemon. But he just couldn't keep up with the deck, and Jirachi was far more valuable. So, in terms of Pokemon, we've swapped two Sobble and two Inteleon for three Jirachi and one Oranguru. And I don't regret it. I'm sorry, I don't. The deck is so much more consistent, so much better now. Inteleon just wasn't good enough. In terms of trainer cards, because we've removed Inteleon, we've actually also removed two rare candy. I felt that with less stage two lines and with the consistency of Jirachi and Oranguru, we could probably get away with two rare candy and the one War Turtle, which I think we did. You know, you watch today's games, you decide. But I think we got away with it. We also removed Turbo Patch because it just wasn't working in our deck. I, I know I added it under fear of energy acceleration, but getting Blastoise out quicker solves that, so Turbo Patch is gone. The second reset stamp I also got rid of because I just found I wasn't using it. it reset stamp was fantastic, but how, you know, how often do you use more than one a game? Or at least I wasn't, so we removed it. And the last card that we removed was one that I struggled with a bit more, and I'm still not sure it was the right choice. But we removed the second air balloon, just going down to the one. I didn't find it was always useful having two, but I also felt that it was usually I was putting it on the wrong Pokemon, and that it was a, a user error rather than error of the card. So, so that's going to go into our maybe pile with the other cards from this week that might appear next week. But for now, we just have the one air balloon. Our team challenge had us playing three rounds of best of three matches, which included two players we'd faced off against before, and a friend of mine who entered alongside me for solidarity. Because these games are very long, I'm going to try and give the broad strokes from each map without diving into play-by-play -play action. First up was the Picaron player we actually managed to take a game off last time. So despite the obvious power of the deck and the fact Inteleon V gets hit for weakness, it wasn't all doom and gloom about this first round. Our start, however, did a little to help reinforce that mindset, putting us in a position where our late game win con was active from the get-go, and finding ourselves a real lack of card draw to get us in an advantageous position. The main benefit we found was that our opponent didn't seem to be accelerating quickly, and with some tricky boss's orders we managed to keep their powered up Picarum away from attacking us as long as possible. Eventually we drew into Dedene GX and found Inteleon V and Blastoise to power up a second attacker. I made a conscious decision at this point that double V would be how we won, but also I had to let him get knocked out. So we went for a two hit KO on Picarom and planned to dig into our deck, find the Ordinary Rod and return double V to one shot the benched Picarom once we'd lost enough active Pokemon. Thankfully, this tactic paid off with little struggle and we managed to actually take game one. I was riding quite a high going into the second game, but we had a rather clunky hand. Our opponent benched literally everything he could ever want, but didn't seem to have much to do with it yet. So once more we had time to sort everything out. With no obvious way of getting double ready for the repeat performance, I decided Blastoise with his grass weakness might be the best play as opposed to our two prize Inteleon V in this matchup. A poor early game and some questionable choices from our opponent allowed this plan to manifest when perhaps it really shouldn't have. But what do I know, he may have just had extremely bad luck with his draws. Either way, I'm not complaining or judging. We managed to gust into a two-hit KO on the Choo Choo, and even after discovering our double was prized, we found ourselves in a rather comfortable position due to the nature of his three prizes versus our one and two prize Pokemon. Compared to the first game, this one did feel an awful lot like luck had to be on our side. But at the end of the day against Picarom, you kind of need all the luck you can get. And we managed to end round one with a resounding 2-0. The second match of the day was up against my friend playing his own blend of Inteleon VMAX and Melotic V. A clash of the water decks, you could say. Game 1 we got off to a decent start with our two Inteleon on the field, ready to face down their big brother should he appear. 
But more so than our aquatic reptile friends, I think this matchup really showed off the pros and cons of Blastoise vs Frostmoth. The speed at which my friend managed to get his water accelerating Pokemon into play was enviable, but also his lower HP made it possible for us to take an early snipe with our Inteleon V. Honestly, considering how short of a time Frostmoth was out, the amount of water placed was impressive. But we managed to use his deck's increased retreat cost tactic against him, slowing the game down and readying ourselves up for a KO on Melotic V. Ahead on prizes and benched powered attackers, we swapped into Blastoise with the intent of taking down his Inteleon in a two-shot KO, which is something that you can't really do with Frostmoth. Our friend, reading the play, decided to VMAX his Inteleon, taking three prizes on his way out before our best sheep took game one. Now, having a better understanding of how our friend's deck played in game two, we opened not a terrible start, albeit with double in the active. We got some early pressure on his Frostmoth, intending to repeat the early KO. However, a huge departure from the first game, Inteleon VMAX made a much earlier appearance and put the game on a clock. A lack of energy acceleration for either side led to the VMAX getting further and further ahead. Not to mention that our hand consisted of what felt like half the water in our deck. I was hesitant to throw it all away, but in hindsight it may have given us a better chance. Neither choice felt good at the time. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get anything set up, and we took the loss going into our first Game 3 of, of this team challenge. The deciding game, I understandably felt quite nervous. Having won versus Picaron, and knowing our last match was against Center Scorch, I clung to the fact that if I won this game, I'd be in good standing to win our spot this week. So having that thought in my head, I made myself rather nervous before the game even started. Having said that, we started relatively well, again pressuring the Frostmoth early, but by the time we eventually got the KO, he had practically done his job. We did strand Melotic in the active while doing so, but a double Inteleon VMAX hit the board, and our hand rather stalled out. The big VMAX Inteleon began to put serious damage on my bench, and I was sat there questioning why Mallow and Lana and additional bosses orders weren't in the deck. I did manage to put big dents in both of his Inteleon, and I ended my turn feeling rather optimistic about taking one of them out before he took two more KOs. Only, I forgot how much damage Inteleon VMAX can do with a scope attached. And unfortunately I had to watch our sheep and dandelion fall in sync. So, we lost our second round. Our last game of the day, as you can see, had us face up against Center Scorch VMAX. And I'll be honest, after our episode 4 tournament attempts, I have had a healthy fear of this deck. I know our list has changed quite drastically since then, but I was extremely apprehensive going into this match despite the type advantage going in our favour. Saying that, watching these games back was probably my favourite to spectate, so I will do my best to explain why. We had a rather perfect start despite Eldegoss being in the active, due to the three quick balls giving us access to damn near anything we wanted. I tried to knock out the Magnemite before he could evolve, as I was very aware how reliant this deck was on its supporters, and how easily Magneton made finding those supporters. It was however not meant to be. The quick Center Scorch VMAX was giving me episode 4 flashbacks, but I tried my best to stay cool, do whatever I could to assure Dub Wall V the finishing blow after we lost a few more prizes. Inevitably. But even as I started this plan, Boss's orders appeared to take that option from us. I desperately tried to pivot into Blastoise as our only attacker left to give us any chance to deal a severe blow to the centipede that was stomping all over us by this point. But yet again Giovanni appeared to end our dreams, sweeping to Demi into the active and then swiftly off to his grave. Game 2 seemed to start almost identically for our opponent, but absolutely nowhere near as exciting for us. 
We managed to amass a rather underwhelming board state while Magneton did work for Centre Scorch. Even our Marnie couldn't impede their plans. I won't lie to you and say that I kept my call cool here. I may have already been messaging my friend telling him that this would be a quick 2-0, but getting Dubwall and Dedene did perhaps make me stop and reconsider my early GG call of this match. After a string of luck we did manage to find quite a few pieces of our board, although without Ordinary Rod we had no access to another Inteleon V having already lost the only one in our deck. Unfortunately the second was in our prizes. I chose to sacrifice a fresh Squirtle, actually choosing to hard retreat the double just so that we could keep him alive and have some semblance of hope for the late game. But not for the first time today, Boss's orders had other things in mind, and we lost the poor guy anyway. Deciding to go for a Hail Mary play considering the 80 damage already on Center Scorch, we promoted the War Turtle, knowing that we'd evolve him up to Blastoise this turn, despite the fact he had absolutely no energy on him whatsoever. The energy turned out to be exactly where we needed it to be, and hope returned as the VMAX fell to our Blastoise. We still had to tackle the bench to Center Scorch, and if he found the VMAX I knew it would be all over. Luckily, no VMAX appeared, but he did gust up our Auron Guru from the bench to the active and swung in for some minimal damage. We managed to scoop up net the Auron Guru, put Blastoise back in the active, and KO for game 2. After that game, I was honestly shaking, and moving on to the final game of the match, and the final game of the day, I was on a high alert. Our board started about as underwhelming as our second game, and Center Scorch looked as consistent as ever. Luckily, our first few turns involved some non-interactive back and forth that I took very happily, feeling that the longer it took him to set up, the more chance we had to find answers, especially thanks to his weakness. We ended up getting ourselves set up as best as we had all day. And aside for the Reshiram and Charizard tag team, our opponent's board wasn't looking too scary. Our Blastoise was finding the water we needed, and the attackers were there on our bench. I was beginning to feel good for the first time in this matchup. Because of this, I maybe took a gamble I normally wouldn't do when we lost our first Inteleon V. I decided our previous Hail Mary worked out so well that maybe I should try it again. So we swung Blastoise into the active, having no energy attached to him, hoping to pull off the one hit KO. I threw as much energy back into the deck as possible using Ordinary Rod, and Marnie to thin the non-energy from our deck. And luck would have it, we actually found the three energy we needed to end this team challenge with a win. Two wins and one loss means we effectively came in second place, and that is huge. I've been lucky that the team challenge hasn't been full of ADP and look metal, but a victory over Picarom and Center Scorch is great. Silver lining for this week is our friend actually came in first place with his Inteleon Melotic deck, so worst case scenario, I will still get to see that Inteleon playmat in person. The deck this week worked great, to be honest. I still think we're far from finished with it, and we'll struggle against the likes of Zacian and all its flavours, and perhaps the more refined versions of Picarom and Center Scorch. but it's still a marked improvement over previous weeks. We have a little extra budget next week, and considering it's the end of the team challenge, I'm willing to allow myself to bend the rules again slightly. With the price of sealed product skyrocketing at the moment, it's getting harder and harder to keep on budget. So, in this one scenario where we do have some cash to carry over, I am going to take advantage of that and I've ordered something that I managed to get quite a good deal on and should hopefully be here by next episode. I'm excited for the next two team challenges and I'm quite optimistic about our chances to actually make it through one of them. Of course that lovely Inteleon V Max would really help us secure the position, but that's a matter for future packs. Until then, however, keep cracking packs.